Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to one of the most spur-of-the-moment programming game dev videos that I've ever made. As in, I, like, thought about doing this this morning and then just uh, sat down to record it. Right now. Actually, not quite. This is take two because the first version was a mess. Anyway, the 2.3 update of uh, GML has added some nice things. It's added some things like structs or methods or functions or static variables. And those generally make uh, writing code for games easier, if you know how to use them. One thing that it has not provided support for is the concept of static classes. It does have the static keyword, and you can use them inside, inside, uh, inside structs or functions. Um, those are not entirely what I'm going for. Those work slightly differently. I am more interested in a static class more along the lines of, for example, Unity's time class. Hey. If you've ever used Unity, uh, in C-sharp and Java and some other programming languages, static uh, static variables, static methods are methods and variables that you can use without having an instance of that class. You can just refer to them with the class name instead of the uh, instead of an instance of the class. In GML terms, that would be something like the instance ID or a reference to a struct. GML does not currently have any support for anything like that built in, although you can imitate that behavior using a couple interesting tricks. So I'm going to uh, create a script. Let's call it, let's call it time. I'll, I'll call it SCR time, underscore time. And let's, uh, come on, I want to backspace that, thank you. I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it something like underscore, underscore, get static time. And this has this function has a dumb name. I gave it a dumb name. This is not something I actually intend to call myself anywhere through code that I write. And I realize that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I'll get into how that works in a moment. So now let's create a static variable. And I know I made it sound like I wasn't going to use those. It would probably be more accurate to say that I'm not going to use them for their usual intended purpose. Uh, I will call it inst as an instance and I will set it to undefined. At the bottom of the function, I'm going to return that uh, the value in that static variable, and in the middle, I'm going to check to see if the value of that static variable is undefined, and if it is, oops, I'm going to create a struct. Uh, you can make this a struct with a constructor if you want. I'm just going to make it one of these anonymous blobs of data, as I've been calling it because I don't, need anything, uh, I don't need anything really elaborate. Let's just give it a few values. We could give it, what would you find in a time class? Uh, the big one in Unity is delta time. So we could give it delta time. We'll call it just dt equals delta time, which is the built-in variable divided by a million. Is that the right number of zeros? That is the right number of zeros. Uh, so the, I want to make that a colon, don't I? Yes. Crash course in delta time. This variable contains the, uh, the amount of time since the beginning of the last frame, since the last frame in microseconds, which is one millionth of a second, which is usually not what you want to want to deal in when you're doing delta time. You usually want that to be uh, in units of one second. So to do that conversion, you would divide it by a million. Uh, another thing that you might find in a time class is, I think, if I go back here, does Unity actually have the number of frames since the, since the beginning of the game? Yes, it does. So you might want to keep track of the number of frames that have been uh, uh, processed. So we'll say frames colon zero to give it a value. We could also give it something like, uh, let's call it total time. And actually, yeah, why not? There's a built-in variable for that as well, kind of. Uh, current underscore time is the number of milliseconds since the game has started. Uh, so instead of microseconds being a million millionth of a second, uh, my milliseconds are uh, thousandths. So you would have to divide by a thousand to get that uh, to get that to do that conversion. Uh, we'll also have an update method. We'll uh, we'll create a method there, and inside the uh, ins inside the time update method, we'll just uh, have an update all of those values. So that's delta time frames is just gonna increase by one plus plus.
that's the right number of zeros. So that's pretty simple. Uh, after this, we are going to uh, return zero, and that needs to be an equals, not a colon, because JSON versus actual code, which is assigning stuff to variables. OK, so the end result. Static variable, for instance, is going to start out undefined. Static variables in functions are created once, when the first time the function is called, and then after that, their value persists the next time the function is called. So the first time this function is called, uh, this will be undefined. It's going to see that it's equal to undefined, so it's going to assign a struct to it. It will no longer be undefined, and then it's going to return it. The next time you call this function, um, inst will still have the value from the last time, since it's static, and the value persists, and, uh, and it will just return it. After this, I'm going to start using some macro magic. I did a video on these a while ago. Uh, I quite like macros. You can use them for some interesting code shorthand. You can use them for some interesting uh, workarounds, such as this one. I'm just going to call it time. And the expression that the macro is going to evaluate into is going to be get static time. I'm going to wrap it in parentheses just in case. That's generally a good practice when dealing with macros is to wrap the entire value in parentheses just because the, uh, the preprocessor literally, or whatever it's called in the virtual machine, and the yo-yo compiler would basically be the preprocessor, uh, searches and replaces the values of macros with their, uh, with their equivalent expressions. And sometimes, if you're not careful with your parentheses, uh, they may work slightly differently than you intend. So this is all the setup. And I'm going to actually go and create an object this time. Um, do I want to give it a proper name? Do I care that much? I've, uh, I've historically never cared about the names of, of objects in these tutorials when they're just here for uh... Let's go into the draw event, shall we? When they're just here to like set up a, uh, a step or draw event for something else. So now let's actually uh, use this static class. Uh, I probably put the word singleton in the title. Singletons aren't quite the same as static classes, although you can use this trick for, for them as well. I should probably explain that a little bit. I'll do that at the end. So let's draw the values in this uh, in this in this time class. We'll go 32, 32, and um, what should the first value be? All right, what is it? I've already forgotten the name. Total time is what I've called it. Uh, after that, we can drop down a line and say, uh, we'll do the delta time value. And then after that, the last one, frames. Is, uh, am I missing? Okay, no. Okay, that was just the uh, syntax highlighting being a little bit slow. Okay. So let's run this. And you can see there are values. They're not updating. And that would be because uh, the update method is never actually being called. So the, the, uh, the data, the variables are being created. The struct is being created. The, val the variables are being set to. But they're never being updated. So if we want to, we can call time.update. And now the. Uh, now the, var now the values will be updated. You can see uh, the delta time value is about 0 0.02. Uh, this, this is running at 60 frames per second, so it's actually 0 0.016 repeating, but it's being rounded to two decimal places. Uh, you can see the number of frames processed, the number of seconds since the game has started. These values are all related, by the way. The, the seconds since game has started can be found by frames processed to, divided by hey. the average delta time. Uh, that is a math thing. I don't think any of you came here from any specific math. You probably came here because you're interested in static classes. This would more likely be found in the uh, in the step event. Someone eventually is probably going to complain at me for putting something like an update method in the draw event instead of in the step event. It's not important. I don't feel like having a million events all over the place. If you want to control this, you can say something like... Only update the, uh, only update the time. If the, uh, if the space bar is pressed, so now you have control over where the time flows or doesn't flow or something like that. Now there's even more logic in the draw event, so 
whoever was mad at me for doing that before is gonna be really mad now. If you want to, if you're just looking for some ideas for what you might do with this, uh, you could always insta update whenever the uh, whenever the time class is summoned. Although that would make d that would make delta time and the uh, the total time correct. Although it would make frames a little bit weird. Hey. So you may not want to actually do that. Uh, you'll see now that um, essentially f three frames are being processed in every actual frame because uh, because this is being invoked three times. I'm not here to tell you how to use the time class. You can uh, you can choose how you want to do that yourself. Generally, I like to do the strategy where it's it's updated manually. That way, you can control whether time flows or not. For example, in pause menus or something like that. That's all I really have for static classes, or at least imitating static classes using macros. Um, I've done this with a couple things. I use this for time in the things that I work on. Um, I've also used this for like a global weather system in the emo UI system that I've made. I do something similar to this, although not um, not entirely the same for uh, managing dialog boxes that are popped up on the screen or some other things. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a bit of a divisive topic in, in computing software engineering. Uh, there are some people who say that you should avoid these at all costs. There are some people who like to just go completely wild with, with uh, singletons or, well, yeah, singletons and static classes. Personally, I say they're a neater, more organized version of saying something like global dot um, time equals whatever. Or maybe if you wanted to have all of the uh, all of the variables just like free floating global variables, I think using a, I think using macros and static things in this way is just a more organized way of doing what you probably would have done, used global variables for in previous versions of Game Maker. I would definitely, and this is starting to stray into the territory of what is good code habits. I would definitely recommend using this for um only specific things like self-contained systems like time. Even weather is probably honestly pushing it a little bit. As I mentioned earlier a couple times and then kind of bounced off of them, singletons. Singletons are just, uh, instead of static classes, they're instances of a class of which only one and only one will ever exist at one time. Uh, they're often used for things like game manager classes so that all of the other things in the game can refer back to a single game manager and and then the game manager can kind of delegate responsibilities, code to other things that it keeps track of. You might use this for something like that. Um, actually kind of blurring the line between static classes and singletons a little bit with this update method, because that's usually not how a, uh, a static time class would work. But if you all don't mind me going back to that one NPC from Skyrim who I like to cite fairly often lately. I can teach you, but I won't be held responsible for what you do with the knowledge. That sounds way more intimidating coming from Feralda than me. Bottom line is that this, this trick here with macros and static things is a tool and it's up to you to decide if it's the appropriate time and place to use that tool. Uh, if you use it in an appropriate situation then it can make your life a lot easier. If you use it somewhere where maybe it shouldn't be, like with the player object, then you may find that your code ends up more spaghetti than it was before you started messing with it. Okay, that was fun. I feel like this subject may uh, may induce more arguments in the comments than I usually see, but that's going to be a problem for future me to deal with. If you want the code, uh, as always, it's going to be on GitHub in the video description. Down in the video description, you can find it there, like always. I specifically want to ask for future video topics. I've been doing a number of uh, videos on shaders recently, and I'm going to do a number of more. That didn't make any sense. I'm going to be doing more shader videos in the future. And at some point, I'm probably going to make a video dedicated to just explaining texture pages and how Game Maker does like texture atlas things. But since I have finite amounts of time to work on these things, I'm going to have to prioritize what I work on. So if a lot of people want me to explain texture pages and how textures work, I'll make that video sooner. Otherwise, I'll just I'll get on to the exciting things like lighting and fog and 3D effects and whatever, and I'll uh, I'll save the texture video for some other time. Okay, was that it? I think that was it. I've got a Patreon for these things. If you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there's a link to that in the places that you would usually expect to find a link to a crowdfunding thing. Otherwise, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two of these things a week. I hope you found that useful or at least interesting or at least maybe gave you some ideas for other things that you can do with macros or static variables or something like that. Get the creative juices flowing and I will see you all later.
Okay, real quick, before I go, at some point in the middle of the video, I think I said something to the effect of uh, manually invoking the update method isn't something that I really, that really bothered me that I had to do. But if that is, if that is something that bothers you that you have to do, uh, and you do want a way to, uh, to have it, to have it work automatically inside this little accessor function without, uh, without you having to do anything, uh, there are some things you can do to, uh, to ensure that this only actually runs once per, once per step. Uh, this is really not the point of the tutorial. This is really beyond the scope of the tutorial, but while we're here, I might as well uh, go into it a bit. So I'm going to add another variable to this, uh, to this, to this struct, this time struct, and that's going to be last update time. And I'm going to set it to negative one. And then inside the update method, if last update time is equal to uh, current time return, otherwise uh, you're going to you're going to run the update method, and then last update time is going to equal to current time. This will just check that um, this will just check that the update method has not already run in the same frame since current time is updated once per, once per frame. And now instead of um, instead of the update method being called three times in the draw event, or as many times as you call the, uh, as, as many times as you summon the static object in every, uh, in every frame, it's just going to run once. And we are going to, uh, we're going to do this. And for whatever reason, OBS decided to, to open up a second window capture on top of my, uh, on top of my screen recording. So that the, uh, so that the game window appears twice. That made editing this video fun. Anyway, point is it's working. This sort of will give you the opposite problem if at any point in time you don't, if, if at any point in time you don't summon the, the, uh, the time object and have an update because then a frame will be skipped and it, this won't plus plus. Uh, that is, dealing with that is definitely beyond the scope of this tutorial. It's not even something that I consider especially useful to have in a game. It was just there for the example, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about how to fix that, but in case I left anybody curious about uh, about automatically updating this, that's one strategy. Goodbye. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to get these things a day early and some other fun stuff, uh, head over to the Patreon page in the video description. Join the fun.